Harkin 40, radial winch. Uh, Amcus, rope rescue system, let's zoom in. Capstan, windless, electric windless, uh, electric powered. So these things are, uh, the terminology is all interchangeable. Um, whether it's a winch, a capstan, a windlass, uh, windlass derived from Scandinavian region, basically it's the same thing, they're all interchangeable. Um, these things um, can be uh, lowering devices or they can replace a haul team and be uh, raising devices. Um, and so everything has its share of and trade-offs, pros and cons, but um, these are great if you don't have a very large crew or like a haul team and you're, and you're doing a raise. Um, but they do have uh, some nuances and some things you kind of have to be careful of and cognizant of if you're going to actually use them. Um, some big considerations since both of these um, uh, are power driven, um, it helps if you can actually see the rescue package. Um, sometimes you can't. Um, and you have to be very careful when you can't, especially like if you're doing a confined space. Um, at least on this one, on the Amcus, there's a lag. And so when I operate it on a haul, if I start going with the foot pedal, and I take my foot off the foot pedal, it's still spinning. So I have to be cognizant of that, especially if I'm still holding the, the back end of it because they can still keep coming up even after they've said stop. And sometimes there's that delay if it's a radio or a whistle or something. Um, so yeah, let's just rig it up. Um, so we have our working line rope that we wrap and we feed in through the pulley. Um, this thing spins freely. So um, as far as figuring out our direction of pull on an anchor, that's not that big of a deal. Um, and let's talk about theory here. So let's really zoom in close uh, and, and look at how the rope goes around the capstan or the winch or the windlass. So um, there's this thing called the capstan equation and it relates to how much tension or how much force is in this loaded line. Uh, and it relates it to how much force is in my brake hand uh, uh, as a function of how many times it goes around the drum. Um, but really what it, we're getting at is, um, it's two things. It's the cumulative uh, bend or a, uh, degree change, angles or radians, as well as the coefficient of friction between the rope and the material itself. Um, and those are both exponential. Um, so that's why whenever you tie like a tensionless hitch around a tree, you want a few wraps. And so how many wraps do you need? Well, it, it just depends. We can math this out. Um, but let's just say for all practical purposes, um, this is a two kilonewton or 450 pound load coming through my device. Um, so if I go, so that's one full wrap, two, three, and four. So if I do four full wraps and I want these to be nice and dressed, and this is 450 pounds, the amount of force that I have to hold here to keep everything stable um, is about 20 pounds. There's a whole big equation for that. Now, um, so we can zoom in from the top here. Um, so if I, have, if I have 20 pounds that is needed to hold right here to keep 450 pounds in place, if I start releasing or if I let go, this will start to slip. Um, and that, that's the capstan equation. It's, it's left and right of the equation. If there's nothing here, if this is zero and I let go, then this side is also zero, and basically. So it doesn't matter how many times you turn this around, if I'm not holding any back tension, uh, it, it doesn't work. You have to have some sort of back tension on the back end in order for this to not to go anywhere. Um, so uh, 20 pounds is probably ideal for like a good uh, user input. Um, I can go five wraps and it'll drop it even to down to even less. Um, if I go five wraps, um, it's more like a thousand pounds of, of load to 20 pounds of holding power on, on my brake hand. Um, so if I need to 
use this uh, in, a, in a raise scenario or a haul situation, so I'll back this out. If I, if I, I can add more wraps, I can take away wraps on the fly. I just have to make sure that my, my brake hand is providing some tension, and I need two hands for this. And as I unwind, I need to maintain that tension through and through and maintain that tension, and now I'm down to four wraps. I don't just want to like whip it because I lose control. Um, it's not like sailing. <laughs> so, so here I have four wraps around. I maintain 20 pounds of tension and I'm going to raise and it's going to do all the work for me for, for the most part, but I still want to tend this. So I step on the gas pedal. Um, if they say stop, um, and they mean stop right there. There's, there's kind of a lag. Um, and this is where, um, familiarity with the device comes into play because if I want to stop quickly um, I, I can still do that even though this thing lags and it, it continues to suspend even after I've let off on the gas pedal um, by just easing out my, my brake hand uh, because again if there's zero here there's zero here so as I haul up you can see that I, I'm not providing any uh, back tension and as a result like Nothing's happening. Only when I actually provide back tension does it actually come up. So it's a combination of my hands providing the back tension, my foot operating the device, and I can kind of feather. So the, the more practice you get with it, the more uh, competent uh, you're going to be as an operator. Okay, so that was on the hall. Um, and on the lower, it's pretty self-explanatory. There's 450 pounds here. I just ease out and just let it go. And right now, it's hard to replicate that because there is no true load. Uh, but I would maintain a little bit of pressure on the back, and this would feed out. And that would just tend that. This is not a hands-free device by any means. So the second I go hands-free, I have no control over the load anymore. Um, and so we have options to capture our progress if we need to stop and go hands-free. Any kind of rope grab here will work. You don't need a tandem prussic, but a simple three-wrap prussic will probably work just fine. Now there is a downside to putting a rope grab in the form of a three-wrap prussic on the front end of your device. That downside being uh, once I decide to let go and let this capture, now this is holding the full weight of the load. Um, and in order to release this, I'd have to like haul up again just a little bit to, to bump it out. Um, not a problem with these powered winches. Um, it's just something that to be mindful of. It's not like a MPD or a Maestro that you can actually release easily. You, you actually have to bump it up on a raise, release, stop, and then continue to lower, but tend this. You could also use an ASAP. Um, however, the ASAP doesn't, your standard ASAP doesn't, uh, kind of lets you go hands-free and stop because these things don't really activate until there's a centrifugal motion and through that, uh, through, the, through the actual housing. So it's like 2.5, I think was the number of meters per second inside here where it won't lock up until it reaches that threshold. Um, but if you have any doubts and you're worried that you're gonna lose control, um, you could do this. But then again, this doesn't engage until it's a catastrophic loss in control. So if you lost control and this thing just slowly crept out, this still wouldn't engage until it got to a certain speed. This thing is really heavy. So these things, you can't really hike. This is not a backcountry tool. You can't hike anywhere with this. It has to be mounted to like a vehicle. Slightly different operation. I don't know if you caught it in the video. On this one, uh, it's, you, the way you rigged it and it, you spun it, it was uh, counterclockwise on this one. On the Harkin winch, um, it kind of the same thing. You have to feed the rope into a pulley for like the correct direction alignment. Um, and these arrows on the plate of the Skyhook. Skyhook just makes the plate. The winch itself was made by Harkin. They've been making sailing winches forever. That's exactly what this is. It's no different from a sailing winch on a sailboat. Uh, it has directional arrows and you route this clockwise. And it only spins in one direction, clockwise. Um, so it only spins clockwise. It does not spin the other way. Um, so if you zoom in on the, the gearing up here. So um, I, 
I can insert a tool here and I can turn it left or right. It'll still spin clockwise regardless. So if I go right, the, the winch itself is spinning clockwise. If I go left, the winch is still spinning clockwise, but at a different rate. So um, counterclockwise on the gear housing is a faster turn. So faster turn probably means that uh, the internal gear ratios are probably lower. Uh, a slower turn means a higher gear ratio. Uh, when we say gear ratio, it's kind of like mechanical advantage. So with this Harkin winch, it has two speeds. Um, internal housing, it's a two to one or a six to one gear ratio, depending on which way you spin it. So for like a fast, uh, for a fast uptake, uh, I can put in the drill bit. and go fast. That's a two to one gear ratio. I don't know what the ratios are through the drill, uh, but at least in here, it's a two to one. And then a little bit slower, that's a six to one, roughly. Now, if we don't have the drill or the batteries died for whatever reason, uh, again, th this is the same thing you'll find on a sailboat that's paired with any winch um, in order to actually stick this thing into the to the shaft you just use your thumb twist it mount it and it self locks in place so now our mechanical advantages um kind of change this is where some people get confused on like oh how much mechanical advantage are you really generating here um well um this is a faster uptake counterclockwise rotation and so this would be your two to one gear ratio but now i have this handle that's a certain length this transforms the actual mechanical advantage of this winch in reality it, it, into like a 13. It's like a 13 to, to one mechanical advantage. Um, it's based on the length of this lever. Um, conversely, if I go the opposite way, it's a slower take up, but now I multiply that six to one gear ratio times the length of this, it ends up being like 39. I'm just gonna round it to 40. So a 40 to one mechanical advantage going clockwise and a 13 to one mechanical advantage going counterclockwise. If our drill uh, fails. The number of wraps should be about four to five. If I have a, a 452 kilonewton uh, rescue load here, four wraps will give me about 20 pounds of tension on the back end. So let me back out here and get my count right. So this is, that's one full wrap, two, three, and four. And when I wrap these around, I wanna make sure that nothing's crossed over because that can really screw me up um, if I'm not careful uh, during the haul and they can pinch on each other. So uh, that was four wraps around the drum of the winch itself. On this fifth and final wrap, let's, really zoom the camera in and focus in on where this rope comes up and off onto what we call the stripper arm. So let's get this. And now you can see that our rope is coming off from here, mounting up onto the stripper arm through the teeth right here. And so here I can come back to you. Wait, that's how close I want it. Okay, so if we look at, at these grooves in here, I can, push this down, it's on a spring. And so these teeth kind of lock onto the rope. And so during a haul, um, you, could, you could consider this to be auto locking, I would. I think it's safe to go hands-free. Um, when, when I finish routing the rope through the teeth, the pigtail just helps self-tend. Uh, it just assists that. So there's your rope going through the pigtail. The rope is going through the teeth. I can walk away and go hands-free on this, it's fine, on, if I'm doing like raising operations on the haul. Um, so just like before, um, the, the back tension is really being provided by this continual uh, teeth grabs that comes off the stripper arm. And so here, I'll just put this in, and I'll just do slow speed, and I'm gonna tail it, mind it, and we, and we raise, and I stop. The stop is instantaneous, um, not the same as the AMCUS. There's no lag or delay. Um, and I can go hands-free, I can walk away from this. I don't need like a, a, a rope grab or something in front to, to capture that. So, um, where it's not auto-locking and you have to be careful is on a lower. Because on a lower, again, I want to 
maintain, I want to get the rope out of the teeth and then control the lower, um, and I'm going to come off the wrap since there's not much weight down there. And I need to control uh, with some back tension as the lower, as the load gets eased out. And then we stop, um, and on the stop, or if I lose control on the lower, like it, it doesn't auto lock. If, if, I, if I let this go, this continues to go, um, which can be a problem. So same thing as the Amcus winch. I can just put in a rope grab or Prusik, rescue sender, anything I want to up front, and it, it'll prevent that. I just have to tend that or mine that with another hand or another person. So that's the only downside. With these uh, drills um, for heavier loads, like a full, two kilonewton rescue load, these things will probably die pretty quick or maybe the motor will burn out. In those cases, um, it's probably better to operate this device uh, as you would like a compound mechanical advantage system. So we're gonna actually operate this on the back end of like a five to one or a three to one simple mechanical advantage system. Um, it does come with another bag that you can pack this up in. It's a little bit lighter than the Amcus winch. You don't have to use an electric power source unlike the Amcus winch. Um, you don't have to take a drill long distances if you don't want to. You can use the handle, but the speed, you're just working a lot harder. So yeah, they all operate under the physics principles, the capstan equation. Tension on one side is equal to tension on the other side times a constant to the power exponential increase of the cumulative angles. So more turns equals exponential increase in tension. Uh, or holding power with the coefficient of friction between the rope and the drum. And there you have it, winches.